Today is the 13th Sunday after Trinity. A very warm welcome to you, especially those who are streaming to join in our service from home. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thought. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord. We stand for the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, who call your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who has lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, 6 and 9. Then Moses said to the people, Obey all the laws that I have teaching you, and you will live and occupy the land which the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add anything to what I command you, and do not take anything away. Obey the commands of the Lord your God that I have given you. Obey them faithfully, and this will show the people of other nations how wise you are. When they hear of all these laws, they will say, What wisdom and understanding this great nation is, has! No other nation, no matter how great, is a God who is so near when they need him as Lord, our God is to us. He answers us whenever we call for help. No other nation, no matter how great, has lost. So just as those that I have taught you today, be on your guard, make certain, that you do not forget as long as you live. What you have seen with your own eyes, tell your children and your grandchildren, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. New Testament reading, James chapter 1, verse 17 to the end. Every good gift and every perfect present come from heaven. It comes down from God, the creator of the heavenly lights, who does not change or cause darkness by turning. By his own will, he brought us into being through the word of truth, so that we should have first place among all his creatures. Remember this, my dear friends. Everyone must be quick to listen, but slow to speak, slow to become angry. Human anger does not achieve God's righteous purpose. So get rid of every filthy habit and all wicked conduct. Submit to God, accept the word that he plants on your hearts, which is able to save you. Do not deceive yourself by just listening to his word. Instead, Put it into practice. If you listen to the word, but do not put it into practice, you are like people who look in a mirror and see themselves as they are. They take a good look at themselves and then go away and at once forget what they look like. But if you look closely into the perfect law, they set people free and keep on paying attention to it and do not simply listen, and then forget it, but put it into practice. You will be blessed by God in what you do. 
Do any of you think you are religious? If you do not control your tongue, your religion is worthless and you deceive yourself. What God the Father considers to be pure and genuine religion is this, to take care of orphans and widows in their suffering and to keep oneself from being corrupted by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark, chapter 7, verse 1 to verse 8, verse 14 to 15, and verse 21 to 23. Glory, Glory to, God. to Christ our Glory. Savior. Some Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered round Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples were eating their food with hands that were ritually unclean. That is, they had not washed them in the way the Pharisees said people should. For the Pharisees, as well as the rest of the Jews, followed the teaching they received from their ancestors. They do not eat unless they wash their hands in the proper way, nor do they eat anything that comes from the market unless they wash it first. And they follow many other rules which they have received, such as the proper way to wash cups, pots, copper bowls, and beds. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why is it that your disciples do not follow the teaching handed down by our ancestors, but instead eat with ritually unclean hands? Jesus answered them, How right Isaiah was! when he prophesied about you. You are hypocrites, just as he wrote. These people, says God, honor me with their words, but their heart is really far away from me. It is no use for them to worship me because they teach human rules as though they were God's laws. You put aside God's command and obey human teachings. Verse 14, then Jesus called the crowd to him once more and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing that goes into a person from the outside which can make him ritually unclean. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that makes him unclean. Verse 21. For from the inside, from a person's heart, come the evil ideas which lead him to do immoral things, to rob, kill, commit adultery, be greedy, and do all sorts of evil things, deceit, indecency, jealousy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from inside a person and make him unclean. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Advertisements are a common feature of our daily lives today. From our television viewing to our radio listening, down to our newspapers, magazines and literature, are full of various sorts of wonder products and services advertised on offer. What we choose to consume and subscribe are by a large part based on how effective these commercial strategies are. The more convincing they are, perhaps the more inclined are consumers' interests, which makes for better sales strategies. We also know 
of advertisements which are plainly misleading and downright dishonest, merely to attract gullible people into their snare for their profit and gain. Well, not to make religion and God as a consumable, many churches also have brought the marketplace culture into the use of promoting their specific brand of Christianity. And sadly, like any market culture, even smear campaigns may feature in our jostle to gain more membership and to increase resources or to push interest away from competitors. Now, this is not bringing our Christian culture into the marketplace, but bringing the marketplace into Christianity. Now, there is no wonder why the great Mahatma Gandhi famously said about Christianity, I like your Christ, but I do not like your Christians. Failed advertisements of our great and gracious Savior makes us bad ambassadors, if to borrow Paul's word, to describe who we are in relation to the world. And as we heard from Deuteronomy, the Israelites were called towards a total submission to God's commandments, to be obedient, to keep every word of God, not to add to it, not to take away from it. And at the same time, by keeping it, by knowing it, through its practice and preservation, it was a way to shape their daily lives. And so it shall be perpetuated by passing it down the generations whole and undefiled. The same thing goes to the word of St. James, who calls us to be doers of the word, not merely hearers of it. James' letter has a more practical implication to the way of religion. As for him, Faith is not something hidden in the heart, something locked up in the brain or in the mind, but must come alive through the expressions of our works. And yet, in the gospel, Jesus confronts a different challenge. Those who are so zealously in keeping the law that they question those who do not practice it the same way and the same fervor as they did. They question the followers of Jesus. Basically, it is a criticism of their teacher in one sweep of the tongue. Oh, how many times have we been guilty of such? Like the Malay idiom, Bapa Bore Anarinte, or like a crab trying to teach its offspring to walk straight. Perhaps in some word of explanation is needed here. Why are the Jews keeping of their law in such a way, in such strict a way as it is? We need to look at their history. Perhaps we can understand them as one of the most persecuted race in the world. They have endured so much in history. From the biblical exile into Assyria and Babylon, to the destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem in AD 70 by the Romans, to the Holocaust by the Nazi regime, not counting the many expulsions from countries and regions by civilizations, both the pagans and even amongst Christian kingdoms, they have found themselves victims of hate and abuse. But instead of blaming their bad fortune on the ruthless and pitiless governments or people who persecute, they saw it as God's judgment upon their failure in keeping the commandments. 
Because that is what it is said and written in the Word of God in the Old Testament. If they fail to keep the law, if they break the law, and if their society breaks down into immorality, God will come to them in judgment. And that is how they understood their fate, their history in face value. Their response to all these calamities is to a stricter keeping of the law and commandments. And by doing so, instead of finding the spirit of God's law, they built fences around God's law to keep themselves an arm's distance away from breaking the law itself. And these are what Jesus, during Jesus' time, is called the tradition of the elders, the protecting net from them coming even near to breaking the law, offending these traditions, if left unchecked, is leaving the whole society in jeopardy of coming near to breaking the actual law itself. Like I said earlier, this building a safety net around the commandment that everyone can stay a safe distance away from offending God's perfect law and thus hopefully saving them from future calamities, something that they have endured in so much suffering and so much pain. Alas, like so many things in this broken and fallen world, they are all open to abuse and corruption. Nothing in the hands of men and women will ever be safe from getting corrupt. We can use the best of laws and find loopholes for our advantage. And it is said that imperfect man can never make perfect. It is also said that to be evil, one needs not break the law itself, but to follow the law down to the letter. We all know how in strict keeping of the law can effectually oppress. And we can see it in the lives of many people in the world today. We can see it, for example, in those who are living in Hong Kong at the moment, how certain laws have made their lives more difficult, how in expressing themselves freely and governments are above reproach. We should never forget that there is wisdom in God's law, a spirit that gives life, not to take away life. It is not simply of punishment, but the law was given as a way of mercy to a living God and by a living God who wished for us to have a guide to shape our sinful lives. The law of Moses is not simply being given out of crime and punishment, but it is also to give a means where sins can be atoned, where men and women can be restored back into a relationship with a holy God. Thus Deuteronomy states, keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding. The law of God helps us to understand who God is and who we are. What kind of love is God is and what kind of love should we reflect unto God and unto one another? Not simply of who is bad and who is good. Looking into that great Psalm 119, the longest psalm, 
it does not only encourage us to keep the laws, statutes, ordinances, commandments, but also challenges its readers to follow the psalmists, to meditate on God's law, to think about them, to inwardly digest these laws, to understand who God is. And what is God all about? And what is our life all about? So that letting God into our heart to lead and guide our way of life, to understand the spirit of God's law is to understand God's character, His will, and His love. Never forget that. We are not called to be robots, to only do what is asked, what is commanded, but to understand what we are doing and why. That will be our wisdom. That will be the best advertisement to show the kind and merciful God and Savior that we have, that we worship. And that is the kind of work and worship that we should express in the world. And the warning comes from Jesus. It is not simply in the false, the failure of keeping the law that defiles. It is not only in outward things that simply outward failure, but it also shows that whether God has truly touched our heart, if God has not touched our heart, and if our lives are not changed from within, all that we do and practice will be in vain. The unconverted heart will corrupt our lives, for it, it is what that comes from within, from a sinful heart, is what that defiles. Friends, while it is easy to give an impression of piety, of holiness outwardly, but remember, God, Jesus, looks into the heart. He sees what has been inspired or what has not been inspired by the Holy Spirit. He knows what shapes our lives, what agenda lies beyond our actions. And God judge based on these agendas, whether we do it out of a heart that has been changed by God or because of something else. It is easy for us to hijack religion for our own selfish purposes, but it is a hard thing for us to let God truly change us from within so that our actions will truly be an expression of our love, our faith, and our worship for God. Friends, ask yourselves these hard and challenging questions. Unlike the Pharisees and scribes, the Jews of Jesus' day, who readily point fingers at those who do not keep the law. But remember, as we point finger, remain, remember there are three more pointing back at ourselves. Did not Jesus also once said, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. Look at our own selves. We need not be judge and jury of one another. We are not examiners who should see who passes or fails to keep God's laws and commands. We can never be that kind of examiner because we all fail. And we know that one day we ourselves will be judged and we are at the mercy of a perfectly righteous judge who is God himself. 
we can let God help us to examine our lives. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Friends, live by this fear of the Lord, and this shall become thy wisdom. Others will see how God has shaped our lives from within. And we shall be true advertisements and ambassadors of God and His Christ to the world. Now, it may interest you before I end. On the reflection of a, a primitive account regarding early Christians, written not by Christians, but by non-Christians. This I share is written by Lucian of Samosata, which within the first century AD, and he writes, this is his account. For this also was Proteus, Elias, Peregrinus, apprehended and cast into prison. This imprisonment, he reckoned, no small subject of boasting, in conformity with the usual turn of his life. But when he had been born, the Christian, thinking it a common or shared misfortune, made every effort for his deliverance. When this way found impossible, they rendered him every assistance in their power, not with indifference, but with zeal, for every morning were to be seen all women, widows and orphans wandering about the prison, and some of his friends, in fulfillment of what they considered their duty, slept with him in prison, having corrupted the guards. Moreover, various dishes were carried in. Their divine narratives were read, Christians also came from cities of Asia, suit common expense in order to assist and carry on the synagogue with them and give consolation to the man. It is wonderful what alertness is displayed when any such calamity happens. For upon the shortest notice, notice they lavish out everything in profusion. At this time, no small contribution were made for Peregrinus because he was in bonds. As they persuade themselves that they were immortal, they shall live forever. For this reason, they despise death, and many willingly give themselves up to martyrdom. Moreover, their lawgiver, the first, enjoined them as brethren, as brothers and sisters. You see, how encouraging is the faith of primitive Christians that they readily come to each other's help. How readily they give out of their poverty how readily they read God's word to encourage one another. How readily they came from far and beyond for a brother. Where they are more concerned to be blessing for each other rather than being moral police of one another. That even pagans cannot ignore their sense of brotherhood fellowship and charity. Probably we can try to guess what kind of impression is our Christianity towards our other non-Christian friends out there. What kind of picture of Christianity are we showing them? Probably that is for us, each and every one of us to answer and for them to decide and judge. 
remember, God lives through their actions, not trapped by their inactions. I would say, that is the life shaped by the wisdom of God. People will take notice even without we even trying to advertise. Because God Himself will be speaking through our very lives and actions. He speaks of His love without even saying a word. And I think that is the loudest preaching that we can do. We can say so many and so much, but if our lives say otherwise, we are making a mockery out of God. Friends, and I also ask myself, how does our lives speak of God's love, His commandments, and our obedience during this distressing time of pandemic? Friends, pause for a while this Sunday, or whenever you hear this sermon, examine ourselves and let God's wisdom fill our hearts by His grace so it may be expressed through our lives. Let God fill our hearts and our minds and let it flow out in what we do to others. Let God speak not only through His written word, but spoken through our transformed lives as well, this day and every day. May God's grace give you and me the power to achieve this all. I speak in the name of God, His Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. With confidence and trust, let us pray unto holy and undivided Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we have revealed yourself as the eco, eternal, and co equal Trinity. Unite your church in all things to proclaim the faith of the unity. Help us to discover you in all your ways, that we may understand your perfect and unchanging plan of love to save our fallen human race. Lord, in your mercy, 
strengthen with your wisdom Daniel, our bishop, Nelson, the assistant bishop, Tong Meng, our dean, and all your church in the service of Christ. Make us obedient to your commands and keep us faithful in each of our Christian calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing of this broken world, peace among the nations, and concord among people. Bless the Federation of Malaysia, the state of Sarawak, and the kingdom of Brunei, Jerusalem. Guide all who exercise authority amidst these challenging and trying times. Direct by your wisdom all policies and actions in our effort to contain the spread of the pandemic. Suffer us not the anguish of calamity, but defend and protect our communities against harm, all harm and ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your presence of peace to reign in our homes and bless our relations, family, friends, and all whom we love. Keep us disciplined as we work together to keep each other safe and prosper all our endeavors that we may offer to you our worship and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal the sick, <clears throat> strengthen the weak and recovering, comfort the dying or in pain. For Albert Giri, Varenika Pong, and Macmillan Jualungan, who are seeking treatment in hospital, Lily Wee and Yo Chai Hyok, who are in the nursing home care. For Adeline Umping, Bruen Montigray, Britain Anna Ujang, Catherine Chong, Deacon Philip Dennis Lim, Elsie Chan, Emmanuel Anak Louis, Jonathan Giri, Melvin Impi Anak Peter Mandi, Ngelambau Anak Ludan, Raymond Morris Bujang, Tan Tech Huat, and Winnie Krani, who are at home, touch and make them whole, and the light of your presence life them up and the light of your presence light them up from the gloom of those in despair and know the comfort of your salvation lord in your mercy hear our prayer we remember those who have left this world in your friendship especially nisi and Nguyen, the recently departed kwe si jun chu fok chin Lim Sun Lin, Jitam Henry Columba, Elias George Jitam, Tumba Analingi, Evelyn Ramas Jonathan, Helen Sid, Anna Ede, Januri Anak Brudi, and Freddy Anak Dugi, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Thomas the Apostle, our patron, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray unto your unfailing love. Merciful Most Father, accept these prayers, these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us 
with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may see and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We, we meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Blessed you, Lord God of our creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and works of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. the fourth Eucharistic prayer. But before that, we say the offering. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy at all times and at all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For He is a true High Priest who has loosed us from our sins, and made us to be royal people to you, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, for we are praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh, glory to you, our Heavenly Father. In your tender mercy, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death and pour the cross for our redemption. He made there a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one sacrifice of himself, he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual, a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, 
we receive these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of the death that he suffered, may be partaker of his most blessed body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave, his, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is given for you and for many, for, for, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Granted by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other, all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our many sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe, do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offenses, and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. Who we'll say? Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in your hearts, 
by faith with thanksgiving. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For those of us who are joining us from home, please uh, join me in saying this prayer as an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The post-communion prayer. God, our Creator, you feed your children with your true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Thank you.